Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up a chat server via Docker. Now, I know that this may come as a bit of a shock to those of you who are new to the channel, as most of the content that I've been releasing lately has been on uh, hardware and mini PCs and that sort of thing. But ultimately, this channel does focus a lot more heavily in normal circumstances on Docker containers and self-hosted solutions and things like that. So that's what we're going to take a look at again today. But before we get into that, here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. Now, I've been partnered with Linode for a long time because they're a great place to host just about anything from hosting a single website to a more complex multi-node deployment. You can find enterprise capabilities like object storage, Kubernetes, and GPUs at a 30 to 50% lower cost than other major cloud providers. You can quickly spin up operating systems from Debian and Ubuntu to Kali or whatever else you might need depending on your next project. Be sure to check out the link in the description or go to linode.com slash dbtech to let them know I sent you. So what we're going to take a look at in this video is again a chat server, but this chat server is called Vos Chat. So let me switch over to my desktop there and here is their website. And honestly, the website's not great. Um, I, as a front end web developer for a number of years, uh, I can say that this website is not great. But um, of course, they've got a, a framed in chat server option here uh, with a QR code there. So this does support mobile devices. We'll take a look at uh, how you can do that here in a moment. Um, but if we scroll down a little farther, uh, here we can see, you know, you can download their different apps as necessary. Uh, you can uh, get more information about their open API and SDK or software development kit. Uh, you can view their docs, you can test their API. Um, and, and we will be taking a look at their docs, but not quite yet. As we scroll down a little farther, we can see we can deploy our own free trial server through Docker. Um, I don't like that they call it a free trial server. Um, because you can just host this on your server. I don't know why they're calling it a free trial other than uh, if you scroll down a little farther here, um, here we can kind of see where it's comparing to other tools. Um, but basically you can run it for free on your server for $0 forever. Um, there are some limitations here. Of course, they're trying to get you to go over and build a community of your own with their setup. Um, and it's $49 a server. And of course you get all these perks. And if you want to do enterprise, you can do that as well. Um, there is, of course, with the, the, the free server here, a limited uh, number of 20 members. So this might be great for just a, a small community of, um, you know, maybe maybe you're in a gaming community, just a small gaming community, or you're trying to keep in touch with friends or family or whatever. Um, this might be a great way to do that. Again, keeping in mind that this is unfortunately limited to 20 members on your server. Now, with that said, if we scroll back up, uh, let me come back over to there. If we scroll back up a little bit, we can kind of get an idea of you know comparing this to their other competitors of sorts. I mean, they're all a little different. Everybody's a competitor of everyone else in some capacity when we get into these types of apps. But here we can see hosted open API, open source mobile app, lightweight, less than 20 megs. I dig that. Um, so basically, if we scroll back up, you know, right here again, we can see uh, how to deploy this via Docker. Uh, if we come over to uh, to their uh, to their docs, we can see that um, they do support um, AMD 64 and ARM 64. So basically desktop or Raspberry Pi should be fine. Um, here is a quick deployment for localhost. Uh, if you want to run it on your server with uh, with Nginx, you can do that. This is unnecessary for the way I set things up, um, but just know that you can set this up via Nginx. And of course, there's another option where you can go ahead and put in more Nginx configuration for your needs. So that's basically all there is with regards to their documentation. Of course, there's a lot of other stuff on here that I encourage you to look through. Um, one of the things that, that happens frequently is um, people will ask me a real specific question about a Docker container. And the reality is most of the Docker containers that I make videos about, um, I, I research enough to kind of find how to install it, how to get through all of the hiccups during installation uh, and that sort of thing. I don't usually go into a whole lot of in-depth, behind the scenes, code review, can it do X, Y, or Z thing I've never heard of. Um, my goal here is to share these types of con containers with the community um, and then provide the resources so that you guys, the, the, the viewers, the, the members of the community can then go to their official websites, their discords, their whatever they might have. In this case, I believe you'd 
you'd want to join their site or their their chat server. But um, but there will be times uh, frequently where I don't have all of the answers because I'm just doing a high level. Here's how to install it. Here's how to overcome some hiccups that sort of thing. So if you've got any any kind of in depth questions about can this do X Y or Z, definitely check out their support, their Discord, or their 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 chat, their GitHub, their whatever, uh, because those answers or those questions have already probably been answered over there. So with that said, uh, let's take a look at how to get this installed via Docker. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that I actually found this. Um, let me jump over to here to my desktop. Um, I actually originally found this um, because I had installed Casa OS um, and in their app store, it was available. So I installed it and thought it looked good. So that's actually how I found this one was actually through Casa OS. Uh, if you're not familiar with Casa OS, there are a bunch of videos that I've made on it in a playlist that you can find um, in my playlists over on my homepage. Okay, so we're going to take a look at three different ways that we can install this Docker container. Uh, the first will be via command line. That's a Docker CLI. Uh, we'll also look at how to convert a Docker CLI to uh, something that can be used in either Docker Compose or Portainer. So first things first, let's go back over to our desktop here. Right here, uh, right here is our Docker CLI. So we can just copy this. We can come over to here and then we could just uh, click paste like so, and then that would deploy. Now, the thing to note here, um, let me, there we go, is that it's on port 3009 and there are no volumes or anything that we've got to deal with. So this is a very, very basic installation. So again, if we wanted to deploy it this way, we absolutely could just by hitting enter at this point. However, uh, you may again want to do this via command or via Docker Compose or via Portainer. So if we come over to composerize.com, Right here, we're gonna delete everything from the dash P on, and then we're gonna paste that in there. And then right here is our Docker Compose that we can use. So if we then came back over here and just deleted all of this and did a nano docker compose.yml, then we could paste that in there. And again, we've got a version 3.3. Our service is those chat server, restart policies always, port 3009, just like we saw earlier container name and an image. Again, no volumes attached to any of this. So a very, very basic installation. Now you could, you know, do a control O and enter and control X. And now you have a Docker Compose saved so that you could then deploy that. Now, the other option is that we could come over here to Portainer. So here we are, we're on Portainer. If we wanted to, uh, we could come over here and there's nothing else in here other than Portainer. We're gonna go to Stacks. We're going to click on Add a Stack. We're gonna paste in that same Docker Compose that we looked at a moment ago. I'm gonna give this the same name that we've got right there. And then once we're happy with how this looks, you can always change that 3009 to something else, some other port that you aren't currently using if you happen to be using port 3009 like we see here. Now, once we're happy with this setting, we can scroll down and click on deploy the stack. Give this a second and now we're up and running. So if we open this up, we can see that we're running. Right here, we can take a look at our Docker logs and we can see that uh, everything is up and running. Uh, we did a web uh, client MD check for that to make sure that everything is actually authentic, which I appreciate. And then right here, it says it's listening on address 0.0.0.0, .0 on port 3000. Now we're actually on 3009, but the container doesn't know that. Uh, so what we want to do next, uh, if you haven't already, is come over to your environment variables in Portainer, click on local and put in the IP address of your Docker server. So I'm going to put in this uh, 0.217 address, click there. Uh, so now that is updated, we're good to go. Go back to my containers. Right here's our Vos chat server. I'm gonna click right there and now we can start. So I'm gonna give my, my server a name. I'm gonna call this DB Tech Demo because I'm super creative like that. We're gonna click on create server. Now I'm going to enter my email address and my password twice. So go do that and then we'll click sign up. And now we've had a couple of options. How do you want people to be able to access your server? Now, currently we're set up on a local server, um, on a local IP address. And so um, this may, that may change. So, and you can change this later anyway. I'm gonna allow everyone to sign up for right now anyway. I'm gonna click confirm. And then right there is, is my uh, invitation link if I wanted to use that. I'm gonna click done because I don't care. And I'm gonna click enter. And here we are, we are logged in to our Vos chat server. Right here is, is basically, if I click that again, we're gonna see uh, the server name, we can change the avatar, we can change the front end URL. If you were going to make this publicly available on a domain, you would put that URL right here. 
Again, you can change who can sign up, everyone, invite only, guest mode enabled or disabled, offline status enabled or disabled, chat layout left or right side, contact verification enabled or disabled. Let's see, below that we've got languages, we've got themes, I'm gonna set this to dark. Um, I think it actually saved automatically there. Uh, then we can go to like my account, and of course this is gonna look different for your users than it will for your admins. Uh, we've got members, again, we can change this URL uh, over here on this update front-end URL. Um, so here you can use this QR code or generate a new link to invite people if you wanted to do that. We've got data management, you can clear chat data, you can clear file data, you can auto-delete data after a certain period of time, that's completely up to you. We've got bots and webhooks, so we can add uh, a bot here if we wanted to create a bot. Uh, we've got Firebase integration if we wanted to do that. Uh, we've got Agora inter integration if we wanted to do that. SMTP, if you wanted to make it so people had to have an email address confirmed in order to register, you would want to enable SMTP and fill out this email and then send a test email to make sure that it actually works. Um, we're not gonna do that for right now, but you absolutely could put in your host, your port, your from, your username, your password, all of that, and then be able to send emails to authenticate users when they sign up for a new account. Something like that. Login methods, I dig this. You can do passwords, you can do magic links. Um, with this, again, I believe you would need to have an SMTP server set up so that they can uh, get that email and use that magic link to log in. I actually really dig those. Um, Google, you can sign up with Google or GitHub or MetaMask or OIDC. Of course, you would need a domain for that. Uh, or, yeah. Anyway, third-party logins. We've got, if, if you've got a... Um, a third party way to integrate, you can do that as well. Uh, widgets, if you wanted to put like they've done on their website, uh, uh, right up here, this is their, their widget. So if you come back over, right here is the code that you would put on your website. And then right here is some styling. So you've got um, a, a way to display this. Of course, you can make this as big or small. You can customize this quite a bit in order to have it display on your website like they've done here. Um, Let's see, I think that's all of that. Um, and of course, this URL would change if you were to attach this to a domain name. So simple enough. License, uh, you can renew your license. Um, expired at 1231.31, so 10, 10, 9, 8, 8 years. Yeah, 8 years, <laughs> give or take. Um, created at 7622. Um, no. Anyway. Um, get a free license through 25 minutes by testing. Book a time here. So if you want to upgrade to get a license upgrade, you can do that by having a chat with uh, with uh, uh, Hansu or Han Meeting over there on Calendly. You can do that absolutely. They've got API documentation, which I absolutely, if you want to integrate, I absolutely encourage you to take a look through their API documentation. This is, of course, on your own uh, hosted setup here. Next, we've got some version information on this tab where you can see what version you're currently on for client and server, when it was built, which was 16 days ago, and you can sync the latest version of the web client. Okay, so there is how to set up uh, Vost Chat. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, via Docker, we took a look at three different ways to do that, command line, Docker Compose, or Portainer. Uh, of course, there I showed how to change the URL if you need to do that, as well as integrate a, uh, SMTP for uh, email authentication, things like that, to verify accounts and get magic links, things like that. So let's actually take a look at the software itself. Um, let me come back over to here. Uh, if we come back over here, I'm just gonna come back to the main page. So right here is chat. We've got members, which right now is just me. Uh, we've got saved items. So if you wanted to do that, you could. And files we can look at. Um, so let's come over here. Let's add a new channel. Now we've got the option, I clicked right there on that plus. We've got new channel, private channel, new message, invite people or search people. Um, so I'm gonna just do new channel. I'm gonna call this uh, video tutorial. And then from here, we can decide to make this a private channel if we wanted to do that. I'm not going to, but we can click create and hey, welcome to the video tutorial channel, right? And then I can say hi. And I know that this is gonna be super enthralling because it's just me in here. Um, but I just wanna demonstrate how some of this works. Um, you know, if we wanted to, we could click upload. Uh, let's grab that picture and click send. And hey, look, now, now we can upload pictures as well. Um, you know, we've got smiley faces that we can use. This all should all look very familiar if you've done any online chatting over the last decade or so. Um, so all of that is there. 
you know, we can click send on that. Um, we can uh, we can reply, we can copy, we can pin, we can add additional stuff up here, additional things like that. I'm gonna say party right there. Uh, and I continue to add different things there. This should all look very familiar again if you've done any chatting online, whether it's Slack or Discord or, or, or whatever, right? This is a very familiar interface and I think they've done a really, really great job with it. Now, again, for the sake of this video, I am only showing this on a local URL, uh, just because if I if I go so far as to set it up on, say, like Cloudflare Tunnels or or something, there will always be somebody in the comments saying, well, why didn't you set up via Nginx Proxy Manager? Or why didn't you set it up via Caddy or 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 Traffic or um, whatever the, the Linux server guys did uh, that I can't remember the name of. Anyway, um, because every, and I, I'm not showing that because everybody likes to set up their remote access of their reverse proxies in their own way. So that's why I'm not going to show it in this video because everybody's going to do it different. And I don't want to waste your time showing you how I do it if that's not how you do it. So um, so setting this up again, all you'd have to do is point to the IP address. Oops, let's come back over here. So wh whichever reverse proxy you're using, all you're going to have to do is point it to your server's IP address and the port uh, that your chat server is on, and then you should be good to go. Hopefully that uh, will make sense to those of you who are using some sort of a reverse proxy. So there is Voice Chat in a nutshell, quick and easy to set up and deploy and manage uh, with options to auto delete. Uh, there's bots, there's all kinds of integrations you can do for third party logins and that sort of thing. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I'm glad to be doing Docker containers again. Uh, hopefully uh, you guys will continue to watch my videos, especially with the Docker containers. Why did I say especially? I hope you'll watch my videos, whether they're Docker containers or hardware, because I've got both coming up and I'd love to see you guys in the comment section, letting me know what your thoughts are on this container or other ideas you've got that you'd like to see me make videos on. Whatever the case is, I'd love to hear from you uh, in the comment section, in my Discord and my Patreon channel members. There's all kinds of different ways that you and I can interact, uh, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. So definitely check out the description for more information about this Docker container, as well as our, ch our channel sponsor and different ways that you can support the channel. But with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And I'll talk to you in the next video.